Hi, tonight I'm going to be walking you through the point slope form practice homework assignment. And you'll notice that there is an answer key that will be included, but I wanted to walk you through some of the examples as well so you can get an idea of where these answers came from. So, the first set of problems we have to do here says given an equation in point slope form that satisfies the given information. And you'll notice that I was kind enough to provide you with the point slope equation right up here. Or at least this is a version of it. As we've talked about in class, you can see it in a couple of different ways. This is the way that's often seen. So that's the way I'm personally most familiar with it. Another form you could see is like this. You could see very similar, except over here we end up adding y1 and leaving uh, uh, y alone on the other side of the equation. So these are all three, these are different ways you could see it. For sake of what we're doing, I provided you with the form I was looking for. So the form we're going to be using for all these examples here. Just to get us started on the first one, right? So it's pretty, you know, it's pretty cut and dry. All you're doing is you're just substituting values in at this point. Now, we're going to leave y. And now for y1, I want to go with the y value found in my ordered pair, which here is positive 3. Now note that it's going to be y minus 3. Again, because we've got subtraction going on here. I know we're t uh, pretty used to seeing slope-intercept form, where if you see a negative, it's expressed as subtraction. If it's positive, it's expressed as addition. So one of the challenges of point-slope form is just getting used to that. So again, since we're subtracting and it's a positive value, it's going to be y minus 3. Now I just plug in my slope here negative one half. Again, I'll leave the x, and then I can plug in my ordered pair value, and there you go. That's point slope form for you. I've got my ordered pair represented, two, three. I've got my slope represented as well. Negative one half, negative one half. So that's basically what we're looking at here, and I'll try an example as well that gives you two points. Ah. Uh, might think, oh boy, this might be tricky here. They're not giving me a slope. In this case, you actually have to find it. So, again, slope, let's say it's change in y over change in x. So I just want to subtract my outputs or my y values, 6 and 5. 6 minus 5. And I notice I'm using the same order here, going first point, second point, negative 4 minus negative 2. Simplify this out, I get 1 half, negative 1 half. So now I have my slope. And now I just have to plug it into my formula. And again, we have this formula right up here. You can copy and paste if you want. Sometimes writing it out can be a great way of actually getting used to using it. Because, oh, I didn't want to do that. Let's try that again. There we go. But yeah, writing it out can be a good way of getting used to it. But no harm in copying it in this case. So again, y stays here. I'm going to plug in my y value. Now the beauty of point slope form is I can use any of these points. It really doesn't matter which one. I'm going to go with the first one here. So I'm going to plug in my y value of 6 equals, now my slope, I got negative 1 half, x, and now you'll notice that my x is a negative in this case. So it's going to be minus negative 4 which you can just simplify to addition. y minus 6 equals negative 1 half x plus 6. I mean, x plus 4, excuse me. So there you go. And that's basically how you pursue these examples here, just plugging in values into your equation. Pretty straightforward. Now it says give the slope of each of the following lines and name a point on each line. Now we're working a bit backwards here. So we're using the same equation, but we're using it to pull information be a little bit trickier, so I'll walk you through this. All right, so if I look at the first one here, right? I know m represents my slope. Got that right here. So I can have my slope equals 2 thirds. Here's where a lot of mistakes come in, finding that ordered pair. Especially in this case, because we have addition. And wait a second, how's that supposed to work if we have subtraction going on in the point slope formula? Over here, they're telling me I'm supposed to be dealing with subtraction. They're giving me addition. What am I supposed to do? Well, as I've told you in class, 
Addition is just another way of expressing subtraction and vice versa. I can rewrite this as y minus negative 2 and 2 thirds, that's not changing, and then x, I can keep this as minus 4 because I want to deal with subtraction here. Now that I've converted this to subtraction, I can pull out my points a little bit easier. So I already know my slope. Now for my ordered pair, I'm going to look for my x value, which right here is positive 4. Now my y value is negative 2. So I think that's one of the trickiest parts of this. That when we end up seeing addition here, in some cases we have to remember that we want to be dealing with subtraction. So we just have to change it to subtraction. So another good example here. Let's try it. Again, m is negative 3. That's pretty easy. I'm going to rewrite this using just subtraction. So I'm keeping the subtraction for minus 8. And then when I get here, instead of adding positive 1, I'm going to subtract negative 1. Again, it's the same thing, but now that I have it written out of subtraction, it makes it a lot easier for me to pull my ordered pair. My x value, negative 1. My y value, 8. So I've got my slope and my point. So that's how you would be completing 7 through 12. And again, you're going to be providing an answer key, but I wanted to walk you through it. Okay, now this is where it gets a little tricky, but it's also the beauty of point-slope form. Let me show you. Point slope form, you'll notice you get a point and a slope. You want to start out with your point. Again, they give us one that involves addition. Oh darn it all. But I'm just going to change it to subtraction so I can have my form. So minus negative 2, because again, minus negative gives me a positive. One third, and then x. Oh, again, got addition. I'm just going to change it to subtraction, because plus positive 1 is the same thing as adding or subtracting negative 1. So now that I've rewritten this, I'm able to pull out a point. My x value, my y value. Again, nice ordered pair. So I'm going to go to my graph here, and I'm going to graph this ordered pair of negative 1, negative 2. Again, just taking the x and the y, making an ordered pair out of it. So I'm going to negative 1, negative 2. Go over 1, down 2, and that gives me my point. And I'm even going to label my coordinates here. It's always a good idea to do that. Now I got my point. I just need a slope. And what do you know? They give me a slope here. My slope is 1 over 3. What that tells me is I go up 1, and I go over 1, 2, 3. Give myself a point. You don't want just two points. You want to at least get three of them. Four is great, but three is, I'd say, the minimum. So I'm going to go up again. Up one, over three, got myself a line. Now I can make a nice line out of it. And I just realized I didn't even fill in the blanks here. So my point, which I just pulled out, is negative one, negative two, and my slope is one third. So that's how you're gonna be graphing based on point slope form. I'll try one more example. In this case, okay, this one's a little more straightforward. Slope, pretty easy. It's right here, negative 2. Now, for my point, remember I need an x value and a y value. My x value here is 4. My y value is 3. Now I just use this information to graph it. Plot point 4, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Up 3. 1, 2, 3. Excellent. Now my slope, man, it's not a fraction, but I can always make a fraction. Put over 1. That means I'm going to go down 2, over 1, make a point. Down 2, over 1, make a point. And I can do this all day if I want to. And now i got myself a nice line. So there you go. That walks you through how you complete this assignment. So again, the answer key will be provided once you complete it, but this is just to get you started. Hopefully this helps. Take care.